Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is the full eyed cormorant. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify, it's the Nano Silk, it's at 50D or 12 watt if you like and as you can see it's in black. As always with the nano silks, I'm going to add a touch of super glue to the shank of the hook. Now it's the way these hooks are finished in black nickel, it just makes it um, really slidey. And even with normal thread actually, I've found that uh, a touch of super glue just helps stop that body rotation. So I've caught in just behind the eye, I'm running my thread down to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. And then I can come in with my scissors where I can find them and take away that rat's tail. Now, the first thing I want to do is catch in my rib. And what I'm using here is some Perdigon body. This is iridescent blue. Now, the reason I'm using this is the width, really. So uh, I'll just show this up to you. It's 0 0.4 millimeters. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it's quite a nice uh, colour. Not that you see much of that once it goes over the Peacock Herald body, which um, is seen when the fly was in the vise at the start. So I'm going to catch that in. A couple of turns towards the bend, and then I'll just secure it in. I'll tuck it just in behind my uh, lever, try and keep it out of the way. And then the next thing I'm going to do is catch in my body material. And for the body then, I'm using some Peacock Herald. This has been dyed black and I want to take uh, a couple of strands. You don't need much more than a couple. Now with Peacock Herald, it is very strong at the bottom. Well, very strong. It's stronger at the bottom of the fibre than it is up here at the top. So what I want to do is just take away the tip of the peacock herald and then I can catch that in with my thread and bring it all the way up to the top. Now at this point I'm going to add in a dozen extra turns because what I want to do is use the rotary function on my vise to bring up the peacock herald. Now this is a, a much better way of doing it and the reason for that is you're avoiding the tip of the hook there. You can see as I'm coming round, I'm much more able to avoid the tip of the hook. And I can see what's happening with the whole body. So I'm not, uh, I'm not making any gaps. All the way round, I can see exactly what's going on as I bring it up. And as you can see, the thread turns that I put in that were extra at the front are now starting to undo. And my thread is coming back to meet the peacock herald. Now I'll get a couple of turns over that. Once I've got that secured, I'll just come two or three turns in front and then I can come on with my snips and remove that waste. Next thing I want to do then is just get some wax onto my thread. Uh, this is to help hold in other materials. So next thing then, let's bring a rib up. Now, I like quite close turns with this particular pattern. Uh, it's, it doesn't always go like this, but with this particular pattern, I like quite close turns. And once it's wet, actually, you hardly see the rib. I'm going to trap that into place. And then remove the waste. Now I'll get a couple of turns just to tidy that up at the front. I'm going to damp my thumb and forefinger in my left hand, pull everything back and you can see what I mean. Uh, it does cover up a lot with the, the fibres from the peacock kettle. Now the next thing I want to catch in is my hackle and what I'm using for this is a hen cape here and I've already selected a feather from this, uh, what, what, what's left of a hen cape, I should say. And I've um, 
I've picked a feather out. Now I've stripped all the rubbish away and what I want to do is catch that in at the point with my hackle pliers. And then just off camera here, what I'm going to do is just slick it all back until I've got this Christmas tree effect here. Now I'll just tidy that up a little with my fingers and what I'm going to do is come in and just leave myself a little triangle to catch in. Now once I'm happy that's in place <clears throat> again I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. Now I've got a big long handle that I've created here but I always find it's better <clears throat> excuse me always find it's better to have the hackle pliers. I just think you get a lot more control and it frees up a hand to, to slick the fibres of your hackle to the side. Now I only want maybe three or four turns of this it's not a particularly thick hackle and by the time the wing's on actually it's just to give you the impression of a beard and because I'm using hen it's nice and soft so the stuff on the top is just going to blend in with a marabou wing and giving that cormorant plenty of movement which is uh, what the fly's all about I don't know what a cormorant's meant to imitate but it isn't half effective Especially early season. Great fly early season. So I've caught that in. Like so. And then once I've got it secured. Keeping my hand on my bobbin holder. I can pull my waist away. And that's looking not too bad. Next I'm going to add in my wing. I'm using some. Uh, Comp candy. Black marabou. And I've already got. A feather which has covered in other stuff that I've been working with. So on this one, I don't want a, a lot. I'll take from the tip of my thumb to my knuckle, rip it off the stem, fold it in half. Now, with this, I want to come as far up the feather as possible. It's these tip bits, tip bits, sorry, that you want to get in the fly. So I'm going to come in, and remove this thicker stuff at the bottom here. I'll just do that over my waist bin. I'm going to damp it down with my fingers, remove any little fibres, lay it on, excuse my fingers, And I'm fairly happy with that. So next I'm going to come with my thumb and forefinger. Pinch the end. And then remove any waste. Now I do want this to be competition legal and I'll check it up against the gauge. But to my mind that's slightly too long. Uh, I've misjudged it and it, it's a little long. Only a couple of millimetres but when you, you fish a lot of comps you, you, you do start to get an eye for it. And that's, that's out with the gauge at the moment. So, last but not least, we're going to add in our jungle cock eyes. Now, the reason I call this the full-eyed cormorant is uh, when I do tying exhibitions around and about, uh, I always have a laugh with the people. Uh, it's half the fun of it. And they always say, oh, I split my jungle cock eyes because I'm too tight to uh, use a whole eye on one fly. So, <laughs> this is for all them folks that think I'm just a tight jock, I'm going to be using the full feather this time. And I'm going to catch the first feather in on your side. A couple of turns. That's all it takes. I'll just check that's sitting right. Then I've got another feather. And I have removed the guard hairs off of this jungle cock eyes. They're very small and, and, and it can be quite difficult to work with, but um, I think it's worth it. And using half a feather, if you've got bigger feathers, it will work just the same. But for aesthetics, 
Um, it does look good with a whole feather. And somebody pointed that out to me recently when I was at a, a, a demonstration. They said, uh, oh, but it doesn't look as nice. Yeah, it, it doesn't look as nice to the human eye, but I'm sure it makes no difference whatsoever to the trout. <laughs> okay, so I just want to cover up the rest of that and start to work on my head. Now that head's a little bit bigger than I would usually like, but we are where we are. I would like it a bit smaller than that usually. Now, I'm going to show you a little tip here, which is uh, I'm starting to do with a lot more of my flies. Now, I have I have been in the habit of the past of I start a fly and uh, I finish the fly and then it goes away in the box, but I've started to become more akin to the uh, doing them in batches. And one of the things I do now, rather than finish the fly off, but I'm going to snip that out, it's getting on my nerves, I know it's too long. So I'm going to take another wee bit of that tail. In fact, I'm not very happy with this fly. <laughs> there we go. It's not quite uh, to the standard I like. Anyway, sorry. Uh, on the head, I, um, I'm going to use some super glue. Now what this does is it seals the head of the fly. Now at this point, you could probably finish the fly with this touch of super glue. And it will be absolutely fine for fishing. Like so. And I'll leave that to dry. But what it does is the super glue soaks into the head. And then what I'll do, once it's dry, is come in afterwards with some UV resin just to finish it off. It just gives it that nice finished look. Now how would I fish this? Uh, I like to fish cormorants and teams. And generally... Uh, if the water's clear, and in the last few years at Rutland, the water's been crystal clear. So I like to fish them five feet apart on a, a sort of 18 foot leader, and uh, they can be really effective. Sometimes I'll fish them with a top dropper with an attractor fly, such as an orange blob, and then two cormorants in behind. And it can be absolutely deadly when you're bringing them up just at the end of your retrieve and you hang your flies and uh, very often the takes are ferocious.